Yes, uh, broadly I've been uh, involved with the field of molecular imaging for uh, over 10 years uh, as it's uh, looked at as a non-invasive way to evaluate uh, biochemistry and uh, metabolic pathways uh, in cells and animals and ultimately humans non-invasively. The distinguishing mark is to actually look at these cancer pathways broadly uh, in a variety of cancers, but certainly relevant in breast cancer, uh, and use non-invasive imaging devices in order to look at these uh, protein functions and gene expression pathways uh, non-invasively. So this can actually, broadly speaking, involve a variety of, of techniques and technologies as they apply to breast cancer biology, maybe positron emission tomography, single photon emission tomography, uh, optical techniques with fluorescence uh, and in animal models, bioluminescence, and uh, also uh, magnetic resonance imaging. So there's a variety of approaches to these, uh, but in preclinical models, we have uh, a distinct advantage to be able to use what we call genetically encoded reporters. So these are ways that we can use uh, standard cell and molecular biology to introduce specific types of reporters. And as the name implies, these are molecules that we can design into genes and into proteins that will report on some specific biochemical event or report on some specific expression of a certain gene within these models. And then in live living cells or whole animals, we can begin to follow these non-invasively. So there's some elegant and wonderful techniques that are the traditional, conventional approaches in breast cancer biology that involve mostly uh, destructive techniques, uh, elegant information, but you need to destroy the cells and get the gene out or get the protein out and then use uh, techniques to study that particular gene or protein in the laboratory. But our goal is to try to look at these non-invasively and in that way, we can add a fourth dimension to these processes, that is the time domain. And so that's a key that we're trying to hone in on, is to look at these gene expression pathways and look at these um, uh, protein networks non-invasively over time and then add that dynamic information to help us understand feedback loops and regulations and begin to look at it as an integrated systematic whole. So we're only at the very beginnings of being able to look at that. Theory, what will be the end result as you'd hope for clinicians? Most of this work is really preclinical in terms of what the direct information that we can provide right now. How are gene networks expressed? How are protein modifications manifest on the cancer pathways? And we gain a deeper understanding of, of those pathways. And what we can that does translate to patients right now is use that to discover new drugs or better understand how current drugs work. So that's the information that right now can link to the patient. In, in the future, it may be possible under selected circumstances to actually introduce these types of strategies in the context of gene therapy into the patient one day, and then we can actually combine a, a diagnostic molecular imaging uh, approach with a therapeutic approach and be able to actually look at this, these in the patients. We have one trial that we're beginning at Washington University in St. Louis along those lines, but this would be uh, a, a very unusual case, if you will. But in the future, we might be able to incorporate that, that in a more um, robust uh, a, a way. So in the end, most of our data is really preclinical and help in the early development of, of drugs and pathways towards uh, treatment of breast cancer patients. Do you have any personal highlights from this year's symposium or anything you're looking forward to tomorrow? Well, uh, we've uh, recently uh, uh, published a, a new uh, reporter to be able to look at a specific pathway, the, uh, the Wnt beta catenin pathway in breast cancer, uh, which is one pathway amongst many that there's a lot of activity to, to look better understand it and, and as drug targeting. And, and with this particular pathway, we've been able to do some high-throughput screens to look at uh, knockdown strategies with small interfering RNAs. And we've been begin to now, in real time, be able to dissect that pathway with these type of um, uh, um, sRNA knockdown strategies. So again, a preclinical pathway to better understand a specific um, pathway, the Wnt beta catena pathway in breast cancer. And we hope to add some new information uh, to our understanding of that pathway and its role in cancer.